Walking in our lovely countryside is the number one pastime of the club's members when they're out camping. And numerous studies have made the really important link between improved physical and mental health and being active outdoors. But don't fall into the trap of thinking that you have to go to famous places or big landscapes to have a worthwhile experience. There are wonderful walking possibilities all around us. The physical and mental health benefits of spending time in the outdoors and walking include improving your mood, better sleep, aids digestion, and it can help you live longer. It can even get your creative juices flowing. Walking and thinking go hand in hand, and philosophers and poets have been proving that for centuries. I was walking when I came up with the idea of a podcast after a chat with my friend, the author Giles Paley Phillips, to bring happy, positive stories to people in these testing times. It's called A Little Bit of Positive, and it's available on most podcast platforms, including Acast and Apple. Psychotherapist Jonathan Hoban and I talk a lot about how walking and nature can help with our mental health in our lockdown sessions, which you can listen to on the Outdoor Guide. We need nature. We so one bit of solid advice that you and I would always say right now is take it, use it right now and get out there when you can. Isn't that right? Yeah, we're a part of it as much as it's a part of us. We're from there. We're animals, you know. I, I, th I think someone said to me, I'm not an animal. I said, you are an animal. <laughs> said, it's in your DNA. It's, it's part of us. It is, absolutely. And I think, I think that people's responses you, to kind of getting outside, um, getting on their bikes, however you do it, getting outside and making that connection is so important. One of my favourite walks, which you can find on TOG, is along the Exmoor coast in North Devon, following the East Lynn River to Watersmeet. There's something very soothing about walking next to a river. This ramble happens to be near the Linton Club site, which is a peaceful and secluded campsite in a rural haven with beautiful views out over the surrounding countryside, and for some, panoramic views across to Wales. So when we can get back out there, this is a nice one to try. It's great going out for a brisk walk, no matter what time of year, but you always need to be prepared for a change in weather. It might start off sunny, but the sky can change in a heartbeat and people get caught out all the time, which is when our brave mountain rescue volunteers have to get busy. You don't need much kit compared with other sports, but if you have the wrong gear, things can turn miserable pretty quickly. This list of what you need is open to interpretation. I'd always advise packing waterproofs and extra layers, whatever the weather, a map, some water and food and don't forget to tell people where you're going too. Being a member of the club gives you some great discounts on gear. It's important to choose a backpack that fits your body. A 30 litre capacity is about the right size for a day walk. It shouldn't restrict movement of your head and you should be able to stand straight so that the pack sits close to your back. When packing the bag, put the heavy things closer to your body and the light items like spare clothes can be packed further away from your back. Some backpacks have a built-in whistle. If not, remember to pack one. The international distress signal is six blasts in quick succession, repeated after a one minute interval. Flashing your torch in a similar manner will also be recognized as a distress signal. So you've got your rucksack, now what to put in it? You'll need at least two liters of water, so either take a reusable bottle or bladder packs. Navigation on the moors, mountains and wild places can be challenging, especially in bad weather. Learning how to read a map and use a compass is essential to being able to find your way. Remember that GP devices and smartphones can only ever be a supplement to a map and a compass, not a replacement. Effective navigation not only helps to make you safer on the hill, it can also mean a better day out for everyone. Develop navigation skills in areas you know, even in your town or village, in clear weather before choosing more challenging routes. Taking enough fuel is a high priority. Eat high energy snacks full of fats, carbs and protein. A homemade trail mix is great with nuts, dried fruit and of course a little bit of chocolate. A head torch can be the difference between getting off the hill safely in the dark or not. And remember to bring extra batteries, just in case. Having a first aid kit and knowing how to use it is important. You can get a ready made up one or you can make one up yourself. It's good to pack paracetamol, a painkiller, ibuprofen, an anti-inflammatory and antihistamines for hay fever. 
zinc oxide tape for blisters and an assortment of plasters to name a few. If you're heading up into the hills or somewhere remote, take a bivy bag or a group shelter. It's a good idea. If something happens, then pop up the shelter to retain body heat and protect you from the wind. On any walk of any length, it's important to protect your head and face. Make sure you have a comfy hat, beanie or sun hat, glasses and sunscreen. Whatever the season, a snood can double up as a neck scarf or a head bandana. When it comes to gloves, you can never have too many. A simple pair of woolen or fleece gloves or mittens will do the trick. It's great to have a few options, including thin liner gloves, soft shell wind resistant gloves and a pair of waterproof mittens. Waterproof roll top bags are a great way to keep gear organised and dry. It's worth having a set of lightweight walking poles attached to your bag. They can help conserve energy and reduce stress on the body. But poor technique can counter any positive benefits, so practice if you're not sure how to use them. After a long day out in the hills, aching knees on the descent is very common and poles can transfer some of the impact of walking from the lower legs and knees to the arms and shoulders. Now everything's in your bag, let's see what you need to wear. Base layers are great for winter walks and you get different types for summer walking too. There are loads of different styles of trousers out there. Water resistant ones, lightweight soft shell style fabric ones, thicker lined ones, or leggings. They all give comfort, durability and protection. It's worth taking at least two mid layers, a fleece layer and a soft shell layer. It's also worth packing a light insulated jacket in a dry bag too. Two more items that should always be in your rucksack are a waterproof jacket and bottoms. No matter what season, these are always in the bag. Don't forget your feet. Good socks will help prevent blisters by wicking the moisture away from your skin and stop them overheating. No footwear is perfectly suited for all seasons and terrains, but getting the right boots, walking trainers or approach shoes is going to be your most important investment. For rocky terrain, supportive leather boots work best or in warm weather, a lighter fabric boot might suit you. Remember to wear them in around the house before heading out on the fells. Be aware of any rub points and if you notice any, stop and apply tape or a blister plaster. Now you're all kitted up, time to head out for a local walk. We might not be allowed to travel, but even from your own front door, you should be able to find some lovely green spaces. Biting off more than you can chew is an easy mistake if you've just started hill walking. The mountains are exciting places to be and it's easy to make rash choices, which are often the cause of accidents. Especially on winter walks, you need more time and planning. So my top tips include, check the weather and take time planning the route. Remember that a forecast is only that, a forecast, a prediction. Assisting lost walkers is one of the most common reasons for mountain rescue callouts. If you feel you're getting out of your depth, you encounter worse weather than expected or you simply run out of time, then it's not a failure to turn around and go back down to your campsite for a warm cuppa. Your walk doesn't have to be challenging. Your daily walk is a faithful companion which should inspire and uplift you on a day-to-day -day basis. Even a short walk gets you out in the fresh air and gets you moving. A break away from the screen is important and actually helps productivity. Try and build that walk into your routine. Finding walks suitable for everyone can seem quite tricky. Outdoor advocate Debbie North has been exploring the UK to find style-free routes for all abilities and it's her mission to make the inaccessible 
accessible. The club has some great campsites with accessible features like the Keswick site in the Lake District, Corfe Castle in Dorset and Ashbourne in the Peak District. These are all set in beautiful locations and the information about facilities can be found on their website. The routes Debbie identifies near these campsites are suitable for wheelchairs, pushchairs and kids on bikes. And if you're walking with little ones, there are some great ways to make countryside walks even more enjoyable. Geocaching, finding hidden treasure en route. Going bug hunting and making new friends with a worm. Getting dressed up in warm gear and wellies and jumping in all the puddles you can find. For some family walking inspiration, visit Tog where there are loads of walks under four miles. And the club have great facilities for children at their sites. You can find out more on their website or in their award-winning monthly magazine. If you need help, their friendly team are there with expert advice and support. After a great walk, it's always refreshing to get back to the campsite and put the kettle on. Or open a bevy. There are over 100 club sites open to all and members have exclusive access to over 1,300 certified sites which are perfect for all types of camping. Whether that's in a tent, a caravan, a motorhome or a ready pitch tent. Camping in all forms is a fantastic way to put yourself on the doorstep of the countryside. It's the perfect accommodation to get us all closer to nature. Just imagine it, you step out of your tent or caravan first thing in the morning, even with bare feet, and feel the early morning dew-covered grass between your toes before brewing that first cuppa of the day. Bliss! The Outdoor Guide and the Camping and Caravanning Club look forward to seeing you out in our wonderful countryside, pitched up on a campsite sometime soon. To sign up, check out the website. Stay safe and don't forget to explore your local parks, canal banks and green spaces for that 30 minutes of green therapy that we all need every day to live healthier, happier lives.